In the continent of Tang Sen, in the weeping forbidden lands, people with weapons in their hands and warriors were lined up near a high mountain on which someone stood in silhouette like a man. People and warriors shouted loudly, addressing the demon Chu, saying that that demon had been destroying others all his life and doing terrible things. The bald man grabbed his weapon and in a confident voice asked the demon Chu if he ever thought about dying here, right on Mount Han. The girl stood in front of this bald man and furrowed her eyebrows. Then this girl turned to the demon Chu and viciously shouted that this demon had seduced her sister and pushed her to death. After these words, the girl loudly and confidently announced that today she would grind this demon Chu to powder. An elderly man appeared in front of this girl, who immediately smiled maliciously and reported that they had been hunting the Chu demon for three months, and now the Chu demon had nowhere to escape. This elderly man shouted that he would take revenge on the Chu demon for his poor disciple. Demon Chu stood right on top of the mountain and watched these rebellious people with a completely calm and slightly tired expression on his face. Suddenly, someone called the Demon Chu. Slightly furrowing his brows, the Demon Chu turned around and saw in front of him in the sky the master of the Yunzia mountain of the holy land of Tai Su named Kai Mengdai, who spoke about the fact that the Demon Chu had fallen so low. Kai Mengdai sternly looked at the Demon Chu and asked him if he was sorry. Hearing this, the Demon Chu laughed loudly and boisterously, spreading his hands to the sides. The Demon Chu asked again that he was sorry. Then the Demon Chu confidently announced that he, Chu Ziyu, had studied for a little less than a hundred years and fought all his life. Glancing at those embittered people who wanted to get even with the Demon Chu Ziyu, he shouted the question of who among the equals of the Demon Chu Ziyu would dare to call himself invincible or call himself indomitable. Then the Demon Chu Ziyu glanced at Kai Meng Dai and smiled very slightly, only lifting up the corners of his lips. The Demon Chu Ziyu told Kai Meng Dai that he regretted only the severity of time. Because if he had not disturbed Kai Meng Dai for hundreds of years, no one would have been able to resist her. Kai Meng Dai, hearing all these words, pulled her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose and pursed her lips in anger. Kai Meng Dai then prepared to attack with the words that the demon Chu Ziyu does not repent of his sins, so he should not blame Kai Meng Dai and the others for their cruelty. After these words, Kai Meng Dai threw the sword into the ground and shouted loudly, telling those people to attack and kill the demon Chu Ziyu. Immediately after these words of Kai Meng Dai, people, one by one, rushed to attack. The demon Chu Ziyu made several gestures with his hand, activating his demonic energy with a sly smile on his face. Seeing the streams of demonic energy of the Chu Ziyu demon, the people who were getting closer and closer to him shouted loudly that the Chu Ziyu demon was trying to escape. People kept shouting loudly, trying to stop the demon Chu Ziyu. Suddenly, three silhouettes appeared above the head of the demon Chu Ziyu among which were such as a golden man who looked like a Buddha, a girl with a purple jug and a bright red demon god, raising his head. The demon Chu Ziyu froze in surprise when he heard the words that may the divine energy pierce the heaven. After these words, the demon Chu Ziyu's body began to be shackled by some dark energy. The demon Chu Ziyu wheezed in pain as he fell off the cliff. The sharp sword of the demon Chu Ziyu also broke into several pieces. In the end, the demon Chu Ziyu lost. The surprised people who were going to deal with the demon Chu Ziyu lay on the fragments of rocks and were greatly surprised by what had happened. The girl whose sister was seduced by the demon Chu Ziyu, in a stern and dissatisfied voice, informed the rest of the people that the demon Chu Ziyu had destroyed himself. Sighing, the wounded elderly man with dissatisfaction in his voice said that if the demon Chu Ziyu had gone to Tanyun to destroy monsters, he would have become the greatest warrior of mankind. Hearing this, other people said what a pity it was, and how annoying it was that the demon Chu Ziyu did not become the greatest warrior of mankind. After these words, people took their weapons in their hands and began to leave the battlefield. Does anyone really think that he, the demon Chu Ziyu himself, will die just like that? There are a total of 18 spiritual mountains in the Tai Su Holy Lands. All the masters of the mountains Tang Zhang, Yun Zia and Tian Jian are recognized as holy teachers of the highest level. All the masters of the other mountains are recognized as holy teachers of the lowest level. A month later, after the incident with the killing of the demon Chu Ziyu, on Yun Zia Mountain in the castle of senior students, a young man with bright red eyes lay on the bed and grinned. It was the same Chu Ziyu demon who had returned. This young man named Chu Ziyu was a student at the university before the relocation. Spreading a very sly smile, Chu Ziyu announced that he had prepared 3,781 backup plans and 1,201 methods of rebirth for today's rebirth. Chu Ziyu wondered to himself how he even managed to die with such a preparation. Getting out of bed, Chu Ziyu looked around and assumed that this was the holy land of Tai Su. Smiling broadly, Chu Ziyu concluded that, apparently, fate itself had brought him here. Suddenly, several system plates appeared in front of Chu Ziyu's eyes. 
The first tablet was called letter and reported that the rebirth of the owner had been discovered. The second plate reported that the system functionality was being updated. The last system plate had the inscription choice, where Chu Ziu could choose two life paths. The first path called a born villain was that Chu Ziu would continue to receive rewards as long as he did evil. The second life path called hidden villain was explained by the fact that, since Chu Ziu had already died once, the young man decided to lay low in order to gain strength before starting to do evil. After reading the system plate called Choice, Chu Ziu thought about the fact that in his last life he chose the path of a born villain, and then went and did evil deeds. The young man laughed to himself, concluding that it was fun. However, Chu Ziu understood that being the one everyone hates, the young man did not like it very much. Thoughtfully scratching his chin with his fingers, Chu Ziu confidently decided that this time he would lay low. Laughing to himself, Chu Ziu decided that he would secretly become stronger and reveal himself to this world once again. Chu Zhu smiled slyly, happily wondering to himself that, isn't this beauty? Poking his index finger on the system plate, Chu Zhu confidently informed the system that he was choosing the path of the hidden villain. A few moments later, Chu Zhu received a system notification letter informing him that the path was chosen. Immediately after the download window, and after it another window called letter with a notification that the download is completed, Chu Zhu broke into a satisfied smile, and then turned to the system and asked to open his profile. Chu Zhu thought to himself that it would be interesting for him to see who he was reborn into this time. A few moments later, a system profile window appeared in front of Chu Zhu's eyes, where it was written that the owner of the system is Chu Zhu, who has the identity of an approximate senior disciple of Yang Zia. After reading about this, Chu Zhu wondered what it meant by an approximate disciple of Yang Zia Mount. After that, Chu Zhu read in his profile that he has no development, and Chu Zhu is the most terribly useless person. The young man's talent was quite ordinary and amounted to 17 units. About the technique of development, it was written that because of the too strong soul of the owner, a strong obsession was removed. The disadvantage is that the darkness is minus 18 units. After reading this, Chu Zhu exclaimed with displeasure that he had an ordinary talent and a lack of darkness. And after reading that the penetration points are zero, and the total combat strength score was that Chu Zhu is barely stronger than a spiritual chicken. The young man was very indignant that he was weaker than a chicken. Frowning at the bridge of his nose, Chu Ziu froze in horror, wondering to himself what this young man was doing before the arrival of the demon Chu Ziu himself. Ten days ago, man Chu Ziu went out to duel against a disciple from Tian Giant Mountain because of jealousy of a girl. Poor man Chu Ziu was defeated with a single blow in the arena, and his cultivation was destroyed. Drinking his tea from the cup, the current man Chu Ziu sighed in horror, considering that past man Chu Ziu a poor guy. However, after a second, Man Chu Ziu took a confident pose for meditation and loudly announced that since Man Chu Ziu was in this guy's body, it was worth taking revenge for him. Man Chu Ziu decided that he needed to create a stronger body now. After one hour, Man Chu Ziu smiled irritably and nervously, concluding to himself that this body is too useless since there is no talent, so the body itself is crippled. However, suddenly Man Chu Ziu broke into a sly smile and giggled, saying that he had a plan for such a case. After some time on Yunzia Mount, the four young men were furiously discussing the news that they had heard that the mountain master had returned three days ago from hunting the Chu demon. Some young people asked in surprise that the demon Chu was killed. One of these young men giggled, saying that among his peers, the demon Chu may be invincible. Then this young man put his index finger in front of him and said that, however, the demon Chu is only a disciple of the lowest saint level. The young man wondered aloud how the demon Chu could escape from a dozen supreme saints. Another young man said that it was a great job, since such a terrible person as Demon Chu had to be destroyed. At this time, an irritated Man Chu Ziu was hiding behind a tree and eavesdropping on the conversation of these young people. Man Chu Ziu smiled irritably, thinking to himself that surely these young people do not even realize that the demon Man Chu Ziu is not only alive, but also standing behind these young people. Man Chu Ziu privately decided that if he couldn't beat up these young people, he would just join them, since Man Chu Ziu is smart after all. Coming out of his thoughts, as well as from his ambush, Manchu Ziu cleared his throat, attracting the attention of the young people talking. Hearing the cough, the young people froze in surprise when they saw the graduate Manchu Ziu in front of them. Then, these young people bowed to Manchu Ziu in unison and also simultaneously asked about whether this young man's wounds had healed, to which Manchu Ziu waved his hand and, with a slight smile on his face, announced that everything was fine now. Immediately after, Manchu Ziu walked towards the stone staircase, humming a tune under his breath. One of these young men sighed and in surprise concluded that, apparently, Manchu Ziu is the namesake of the demon Chu. Another young man asked his friends if Manchu Ziu had any secret connections with the demon. 
to which his friend folded his hands in front of him and said in a bored voice that that young man was thinking too much. Because if there were these connections with a demon, then Manchu Zhu would not allow his cultivation to be destroyed. To which the young man, after listening, replied with a short consent. After some time, Manchu Zhu climbed the stairs and approached a beautiful building, or rather, the Kai Meng Dai Mansion. After knocking on the gates of this mansion, Manchu Zhu loudly called his master Kai Meng Dai and informed her that her disciple was asking for a meeting. A few moments later, Manchu Zhu walked inside and walked up to Kai Meng Dai herself. Master Kai Meng Dai was surprised to call Manchu Zhu by name, and then reported that ten days ago Manchu Zhu was injured in battle, and now he comes to her. Kai Meng Dai then asked Manchu Zhu about whether the young man wanted to ask her for help with his teaching. Manchu Zhu immediately got down on one knee and bowed, politely asking Master Kai Meng Dai for help. Master Kai Meng Dai closed her eyes and informed Manchu Zhu that the young man has a low learning ability, but he likes to get into fights, so Manchu Zhu deserves such an outcome. After these words, Kai Meng Dai briefly replied that she could not help Manchu Zhu, so he had to leave. Manchu Zhu immediately straightened up and pulled his eyebrows to the bridge of his nose, asking Master Kai Meng Dai if she knew why the young man had such a low learning ability. Then Manchu Zhu began to shout loudly the question of how he could become strong without any resources. Clenching his fists, Manchu Zhu reported that Master Kai Meng Dai had given all his resources to his elders. After that, Manchu Zhu began to ask Master Kai Meng Dai about why she would not tell him about how Manchu Zhu became stronger when Kai Meng Dai gave everything to others. Suddenly, Kai Meng Dai slammed her palm on the table and shouted loudly that this was outrageous. Kai Meng Dai began to shout that Manchu Zhu did not have enough talent and the young man was too lazy to study, but at the same time he dared to blame Kai Meng Dai. Continuing to slam her palm on the table, Kai Meng Dai shouted that it was disgusting. Manchu Zhu angrily began to giggle, asking Kai Meng Dai that isn't the reason why Master Kai Meng Dai doesn't give Manchu Zhu any resources, isn't because the young man has the same name as the demon Chu. Continuing to smile aggressively, Manchu Zhu asked Master Kai Meng Dai that isn't it funny that Kai Meng Dai therefore harbored a grudge against her disciple Manchu Zhu? Kai Meng Dai furrowed her brows in displeasure, and then slowly began to approach Manchu Zhu with the words that she had never been angry with him. Then Master Kai Meng Dai told the disciple Manchu Zhu to return, and she would look for medicines for the young man's wounds, and Manchu Zhu would continue training. Manchu Zhu folded his hands in front of him and broke into a sly smile, refusing all of this. Then Manchu Zhu turned to Master Kai Meng Dai and informed her that she could help him right now. Kai Meng Dai looked at her student in surprise and asked what he was talking about. Manchu Zhu immediately reported that he had heard that Master Kai Meng Dai has a healing aromatic property. Approaching the dumbfounded Kai Meng Dai almost closely, Manchu Zhu coquettishly smiled and said that if he could study with Kai Meng Dai, then not only his wounds would heal, but his talent would also increase. Kai Meng Dai immediately furrowed her brows and asked about what Manchu Zhu had just said. Manchu Zhu immediately cleared his throat and innocently announced that he wanted to say that Manchu Zhu politely asks Master Kai Meng Dai to study with him. Hearing this, Kai Meng Dai instantly blushed with embarrassment. A second later, Kai Meng Dai loudly shouted a question about whether this rebellious disciple Manchu Zhu was looking for death. Then the embarrassed master Kai Meng Dai swung her hand, intending to slap Manchu Zhu in the face, shouting that the young man dares to mock her in her own temple. After these words, Kai Meng Dai made an evil expression on her face and prepared her energy sword for an attack, simultaneously announcing with an angry shout that Kai Meng Dai would break Manchu Zhu's bones and expel him from his mountain today. Manchu Zhu put his index finger to his lips and smiled slyly, exuding light streams of his bright red demonic energy. After a few moments, Kai Meng Dai's sharp energy sword shattered into pieces like ice. After a second, the surprised master Kai Meng Dai fell to the floor, nervously wondering to herself how this happened. Kai Meng Dai thought it was impossible that she couldn't unleash her higher powers. Manchu Zhu smiled sweetly and again politely asked master Kai Meng Dai for help. Embarrassed, Kai Meng Dai blushed again and screamed, asking the rebellious disciple Manchu Zhu about what that guy was doing to his master. Manchu Zhu pulled his hands towards the body of the cold sweat covered and confused Kai Meng Dai with the words of the master's request to train him. Examining the palm extended to her, Master Kai Meng Dai began to shout again, calling Manchu Zhu a treacherous disciple. Then Kai Meng Dai began to ask this disciple through a scream about why Manchu Zhu was doing this to his master. While Kai Meng Dai was screaming, she tried to slowly crawl back, mentally concluding that for some reason Kai Meng Dai could not use her abilities. Kai Meng Dai became aware of the fact that she is now like an ordinary person. The slyly smiling Manchu Zhu inwardly gave up wondering what he had done. Then Manchu Zhu himself answered his question, saying to himself that Manchu Zhu, of course, sealed the skills of his master Kai Meng Dai. 
taking the embarrassed and flushed master Kai Meng Dai with his hand. Manchu Ziu silently recalled that on the day when the demon Chu was chased by dozens of saints, Manchu Ziu secretly used the blocking seal of Samsara. This jewel was given to Manchu Ziu by the system. Manchu Ziu also remembered about the system plate with information about this thing. This thing was called the seal of the mother and son of Samsara blocking the divine powers. This sadness belonged to the category of sealing things. In addition, this seal has a divine class, and when used, this seal is able to secretly seal skills in the body of the chosen female victim using the seal of the sun. Using the mother seal also allows the user to completely seal the forces of other allies at any time. Also in this system plate it was reported that this seal can be reused. Manchu Ziu was smiling broadly and stroking Master Kai Meng Dai's face with his hand. Privately, Manchu Ziu reflected that under the influence of the divine power of the seal, any woman would unquestioningly listen to Manchu Ziu's orders. Stroking the face of the embarrassed Kai Meng Dai master with his fingertips, Manchu Ziu noticed with undisguised surprise on his face that Kai Meng Dai is more than a thousand years old, and this girl's skin is still tender. The blushing master Kai Meng Dai tried to shout in a flirtatious voice, calling Manchu Ziu an unruly disciple and asked about how a young man dares to express such disrespect. Kai Meng Dai then asked her student Manchu Ziu if he was afraid that this girl would kill him. Manchu Ziu immediately smiled slyly and began to giggle, suggesting that he kill him as soon as possible. Embarrassed, Kai Meng Dai immediately turned her head to the side. Manchu Ziu immediately grinned and asked the master Kai Meng Dai who turned away, about the fact that, really, she only barks a lot, but can't bite. Suddenly, Manchu Ziu moved closer to Kai Meng Dai's ear and whispered to her as a master, starting to ask that if Manchu Ziu tells the master of the Holy Sword Peak named Liu Ziu that Master Kai Meng Dai has lost her powers, then, as Kai Meng Dai thinks, what Master Liu Ziu will do. Manchu Ziu reminded Master Kai Meng Dai that, once upon a time, Kai Meng Dai killed Master Liu Ziu's father with one swing of her sword. Manchu Ziu asked Kai Meng Dai that, did she really think that Master Liu Ziu would miss the chance to take revenge on the murderer? Hearing this, Kai Meng Dai froze in horror, thinking to herself that there was no way she could let Liu Ziu know about this, since Master Liu Ziu would definitely kill Kai Meng Dai then. As she continued to think about it, Kai Meng Dai began to realize that this woman named Liu Ziu was definitely crazy. Drawing her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose, Master Kai Meng Dai began to shout that it did not matter to her whether Manchu Ziu wanted heavenly materials, earthly wealth, or resources for developing abilities. Kai Meng Dai nervously but confidently said that she would give her disciple Manchu Ziu everything that that young man wanted. Kai Meng Dai told her disciple Manchu Ziu to take whatever the young man wanted for now. Kai Meng Dai didn't have time to finish. Suddenly, Manchu Ziu knocked his master Kai Meng Dai to the floor and began to refuse simultaneously informing that Manchu Ziu did not need any of this at all, because the only thing Manchu Ziu wanted. Manchu Ziu didn't have time to finish. Kai Meng Dai blushed even more and was covered with drops of cold sweat when she began to shout that she would not do this for anything, for anything in the world. Kai Meng Dai kept shouting that Manchu Ziu dared to think of such a thing. However, suddenly Master Kai Meng Dai groaned and announced that she had the power of the Supreme Saint stored in her. Kai Meng Dai wondered aloud how she could possibly submit to such a non-entity as Manchu Ziu. Manchu Ziu smiled slyly, thinking to himself that he was not at enmity with Kai Meng Dai herself or with the Holy Land of Tai Su, and Kai Meng Dai still participated in the chase in order to kill Manchu Ziu. Casting his sly and arrogant glance at the girl, Manchu Ziu asked Kai Meng Dai if she now knew the feeling of fear. Then the grinning Manchu Ziu opened the book from his golden energy and informed the confused Kai Master Meng Dai that she would leave it. Manchu Ziu then explained to his Kai Meng Dai master that this was an ancient cultivation technique that could be useful to Kai Meng Dai. Then Manchu Ziu told Master Kai Meng Dai to take a look at this book with an ancient cultivation technique. A golden energy book was reflected in Master Kai Meng Dai's eyes. Kai Meng Dai immediately began to wonder where this disciple Manchu Ziu got such a brilliant technique from. Kai Meng Dai noticed that traces of the heavenly Tao can be traced in this technique. Kai Meng Dai thought it was unbelievable. Suddenly, Manchu Ziu moved even closer to Kai Meng Dai and asked the master about how about this, to which Kai Meng Dai loudly shouted for Manchu Ziu to get out of here. Flashing his bright red eyes, Manchu Ziu turned to Master Kai Meng Dai and told him to just give the disciple what he wanted. Kai Meng Dai was covered with drops of cold sweat and began to talk in a nervous stuttering voice that Manchu Ziu was not a good person. At the same moment, Manchu Ziu received a system notification that he, that is, the master, had finally become a rebellious disciple. The system also reported that Manchu Ziu has become no worse than a great villain, so the young man gets 1,000 points. Kai Meng Dai sighed again, making some strange mumbling sounds. 
Man Chu Ziu again received an alert from the system, where it was written that the master of Man Chu Ziu is developing in pairs with the immortal Kai Meng Dai, as well as that Man Chu Ziu's wounds have recovered. Then another text appeared in this system alert stating that, due to the fact that the master of Man Chu Ziu is developing in pairs with the immortal Kai Meng Dai, the position of Man Chu Ziu's skills has been changed. Worried, Kai Meng Dai clutched a piece of cloth of her clothes with her hand. Manchu Ziu received a system notification that the skill of the master Manchu Ziu increased by plus 100 points three times. Immediately after that, another system notification appeared that master Manchu Ziu's skills had reached plus 317 points marked divine class. It was also reported that the speed of skill development increased by 20 points. In addition, the hostess, the immortal Kai Meng Dai, became one of the 20 for Manchu Ziu. It was also reported there that the training of the master man Chu Ziu advanced to the second stage of building skills, then to the third stage. After a few moments, man Chu Ziu found out that his training had advanced to the eighth stage of skill building. A few hours later, Kai Meng Dai was lying on her side and staring at the wall. Happy as a cat, man Chu Ziu was adjusting his clothes at the same time. The system also sent a notification to the young man that the owner of Man Chu Ziu is now at the ninth stage of building skills. Then Man Chu Ziu turned towards Kai Meng Dai and said to his master, Thank you so much for your help. Smiling slyly, Man Chu Ziu said that they would see each other again. Master Kai Meng Dai, at this time, sat down and hugged her knees with sadness in her voice, informing her disciple Man Chu Ziu that Kai Meng Dai had already given him what Man Chu Ziu wanted. Master Kai Meng Dai then asked her disciple Man Chu Ziu in an uncertain voice if he could remove the seal from Kai Meng Dai, to which Man Chu Ziu broke into the sweetest smile possible and said that of course not. After these words, Man Chu Ziu began to leave. The nervous Kai Meng Dai screamed loudly in discontent, saying that Man Chu Ziu was terrible. Kai Meng Dai then nervously shouted a question about whether Man Chu Ziu really wanted to kill his master. Man Chu Ziu folded his hands behind his back and, without even turning towards the immortal girl, turned to Master Kai Meng Dai, informing him that if Kai Meng Dai did not want people to know about her sealed powers, then Kai Meng Dai should hide them well. Suddenly, Man Chu Ziu took out a blue round stone and asked Master Kai Meng Dai if she knew what this sealing crystal was used for. Tossing this sealing crystal in his hand, Man Chu Ziu turned around and giggled loudly. Watching Kai Meng Dai's reaction, clenching her fist, Kai Meng Dai bulged her eyes in shock and asked her disciple Man Chu Ziu about whether this young man had also preserved images. Man Chu Ziu smiled sweetly and tossed the imprinting crystal in his hand again. And then with his free hand Man Chu Ziu waved an irritated Kai Meng Dai, informing that Man Chu Ziu would leave it as a souvenir. Master Kai Meng Dai also bared her teeth in anger and began to growl. Man Chu Ziu hastened to leave Kai Meng Dai Temple with words of warning that for their good and long-lasting cooperation, Man Chu Ziu warns that Kai Meng Dai should not try to remove the seal. Waving goodbye with his free hand, Man Chu Ziu noticed that even if Kai Meng Dai searched the entire Tang Sen continent, except for her disciple Man Chu Ziu, no one would be able to remove the seal unless it was the reincarnation of the Divine Emperor himself. Man Chu Ziu turned around and broke into a sly smile. Informing that, however, as Master Kai Meng Dai knows, this world no longer has a divine emperor. Man Chu Ziu also noticed that if her disciple Man Chu Ziu dies, Kai Meng Dai will live this life as an immortal until her life somehow ends. Seeing Kai Meng Dai's master trembling and frightened, Man Chu Ziu calmly informed her that if Kai Meng Dai did not believe him, he could try. Man Chu Ziu also added that to all this, if Man Chu Ziu dies, then the images from this crystal will scatter all over the continent. Man Chu Ziu asked Master Kai Meng Dai what the inhabitants of the Tang Sen continent would think of her then. When the disciple Man Chu Ziu almost came to the exit of the temple, Master Kai Meng Dai, trembling with fear and nerves, informed Man Chu Ziu that he would die suffering in hellish pain. Then Kai Meng Dai could not stand it and loudly shouted that her disciple Man Chu Ziu was a vile and bad person. Kai Meng Dai loudly shouted the question of how a non-entity like Man Chu Ziu, who had just crossed the boundaries of Dao Gong, was able to seal the powers of an immortal girl named Kai Meng Dai. After some time, Man Chu Ziu looked at the night sky and wondered in surprise who would have thought that Man Chu Ziu would come early in the morning and finish late at night. Going down the steps, Man Chu Ziu concluded that, thanks to the help of Master Kai Meng Dai, Man Chu Ziu was able to reach the ninth stage of mastering skills. Man Chu Ziu decided that he needed to wait a bit before stepping over the boundaries of Long Hai. Man Chu Ziu scratched his chin thoughtfully and concluded in his head that if we assume that the boundaries of Long Hai are a barrel of water, then the process of mastering is the process of assembling a tree. Man Chu Ziu also realized that the more stable the mastering process, the better and stronger the boundaries of Long Hai, since the results of the path do not stand still. 
Manchu Zi remembered that in his previous life he failed because he missed the construction of boundaries, making his skills unstable during development, spreading out a sly smile. Manchu Zi looked to the side and decided to himself that if this was the case, then he should forcefully rebuild his abilities in order to create the best possible skills. Manchu Zi thought that by the time he faced a disciple whose skills were above Manchu Zi's level, Manchu Zi would still be able to win the fight. Approaching some building, Manchu Zi wondered to himself, who knows, maybe those resources for the foundation of skills that Manchu Zi hid here many years ago are still in this canyon. Manchu Zi also wondered that if these resources were still there, then how could he leave the holy lands of Tai Su? When Manchu Zi got closer to that building, he saw a sign with the inscription Fast Boat Hire Shop. Manchu Zi broke into a sly smile, thinking to himself that this was a sign. After a certain period of time, Manchu Zi rented a flying boat, which moved thanks to the bright red energy, and sailed towards that canyon. When Manchu Zi swam inside the canyon, he began to look around, thinking to himself that the resources that Manchu Zi had hidden once must be somewhere here. After a certain period of time, Manchu Zi swam to the stone island and came ashore, seeing the right stone. Biting his finger, Manchu Zi released some red liquid from it and leaned his finger against the pattern on that very stone. That stone immediately lit up with bright red energy and gradually began to move away with a screech. A few moments later, a large chest with a heavy lock appeared in front of Manchu Ziu's eyes, and several small bags appeared next to it. Manchu Ziu immediately laughed happily, surprised that these resources were really still here. After these words and laughter, Manchu Ziu approached his chest and was about to open it when he heard someone's voice. This voice called Manchu Ziu trash and said that he did not think he would meet him again. Manchu Ziu furrowed his brows and turned back not hiding his slight surprise. Hearing that voice, Manchu Zhu immediately stood up and froze. At this time, a celestial ship was sailing up to Manchu Zhu, moving due to bright bluish energy. The man standing right on the bow of this boat was smiling and asking Manchu Zhu about who we have here. Turning around, Manchu Zhu saw a disciple of Tang Jan Peak named Jan Meng, who continued to call Manchu Zhu Trash Chu and ask about whether he had not died yet. Then Ken Meng reported that he could not imagine that he would meet Manchu Zhu ten days later. Behind Ken Meng, at this time, another young man was sitting and a girl was standing. The two of them were smirking arrogantly as they examined Manchu Zhu. Ken Meng, on the other hand, broke into a sly smile and said that, apparently, the Yun Zia master named Kai Meng Dai took good care of Manchu Zhu, since she gave the young man medicines and treasures to recover. Manchu Zhu, on the other hand, stood with a completely calm and unperturbed expression, privately concluding that this guy named Ken Meng is the one who ridiculed Manchu Zhu and destroyed his skills ten days ago. Although Manchu Ziu expressed only calmness and equanimity, but inwardly the young man wondered if this Ken Meng dared to appear in front of Manchu Ziu after what he had done. Then Manchu Ziu got his feet on his boat and hurried away from the shore with the words that he would take revenge on Ken Meng later, leaving Ken Meng's boat behind. Manchu Ziu, without even deigning that young man with his gaze, announced that in ten days they would fight again in the arena. Giant Meng turned to his friends with undisguised surprise and asked about what Manchu Ziu had said and whether Giant Meng had heard correctly. The girl and the young man were silent for a few seconds, but then abruptly and very loudly began to laugh, holding their bellies. The girl, continuing to laugh very loudly, repeated Manchu Zhu's words that the young man said that he would wait for Jan Meng in the arena. That young man was already crying with laughter and loudly asking if a trash like Manchu Zhu really wanted to fight with Mr. Ken Meng again. Seeing his friends laughing, Kang Meng closed his eyes contentedly and broke into a slight smile. Then Ken Meng abruptly turned back around and spread his arms out to the sides. Using his bluish bright energy, Ken Meng activated the sound at a distance of a thousand la. After activating this technique, Ken Meng turned to Manchu Ziu as a useless Chu and reported that ten days ago, Ken Meng almost killed Manchu Ziu in front of Master Yun Zia. Jian Meng went on to say that since Manchu Ziu is looking for death and challenged Jian Meng to a fight again, then, ten days later in the arena, Manchu Ziu should not blame Jian Meng for the outcome of the fight. All these words of Ken Meng were heard not only by Manchu Ziu, but also by many other people who were a thousand lie away from Ken Meng. Hearing this, one young man in surprise shouted questions about whether Manchu Ziu had gone mad and why Manchu Ziu had popped into the arena again. Another young man folded his hands behind his back and reported that he thought that the sea of Manchu Ziu's power had been destroyed. Then, this young man wondered aloud how Manchu Ziu would fight with Kang Meng, who is in the final stages of development. Other young people giggled and talked about how something interesting was waiting for them in ten days. After some time, Manchu Ziu arrived on his boat to the temple of his master Kai Meng Dai. Arriving right at the end of the steps, Manchu Ziu immediately stopped his boat. 
A few moments later, Manchu Ziyu was already approaching the gates of the temple of Master Kai Meng Dai Mo, saying that the spiritual energy in the chambers of Master Kai Meng Dai is very dense. After that, Manchu Ziyu resolutely told himself out loud that Manchu Ziyu would study there tonight. Manchu Ziyu was sure that Master Kai Meng Dai would not mind it, since what belongs to Manchu Ziyu is his by right. From this, Manchu Ziyu concluded that Master Kai Meng Dai belongs to Manchu Ziyu, which means everything is hers and his too. Entering the Kai Meng Dai Temple, Manchu Ziyu smiled broadly and wished his Kai Meng Dai master a good evening. Manchu Ziyu then turned to Kai Meng Dai as a master and informed her that her disciple had returned. Lying on her bed, a disgruntled Kai Meng Dai greeted Manchu Ziyu, calling him a rebellious disciple, and said that Manchu Ziyu had returned again at such a late hour. Sitting on her lap, Kai Meng Dai tensed up and asked Manchu Ziyu about what he was going to do. Manchu Ziyu walked up to Master Kai Meng Dai's bed and pulled his hand aside asking Master Kai Meng Dai if she really wanted to repeat what they had done together in the morning. The tense Kai Meng Dai began to crawl back and address Manchu Ziyu as a treacherous disciple, shouting at him to only dare to touch her. The cunning and flirtatious Manchu Ziyu moved closer to the embarrassed Kai Meng Dai and gently stroked her lips with his thumb, saying that Manchu Ziyu has something more entertaining. Manchu Ziyu then asked Kai Meng Dai if she wanted to take a look. After that, Manchu Ziyu took one step back and put his index finger in front of him, gradually forming a bright red energy in the form of tablets with white bright hieroglyphs. One second later, Manchu Ziyu shouted loudly about the jump of the formation, and the bright red energy immediately went straight to the exit of the temple in a powerful stream. In a few moments, the entire Kai Meng Dai temple was under an energetic red dome of Manchu Ziyu energy. Seeing this, Kai Meng Dai frowned in surprise at the bridge of her nose and reported that this formation is familiar. Kai Meng Dai then asked Manchu Ziyu in surprise that this was really a legacy of primitive methods of formation. Manchu Ziyu closed his eyes and broke into a satisfied smile, noticing the fact that his master Kai Meng Dai is well aware of this. Then Manchu Ziyu briefly informed Kai Meng Dai that he would give her this formation if Manchu Ziyu received something from master Kai Meng Dai in return. Kai Meng Dai furrowed her eyebrows and folded her hands in front of her, starting to look away at the floor and shake her head from side to side with the words that Kai Meng Dai does not want. Manchu Ziyu nodded and smiled sweetly, informing that if so, then Manchu Ziyu will go to study in silence. After a few moments, Manchu Ziyu took out a bag from somewhere and took one of the apples in his hand. Then Manchu Ziyu turned to Master Kai Meng Dai and broke into a wide caring smile, saying that since Kai Meng Dai is now mortal, she needs to eat. Kai Meng Dai averted her frustrated and irritated gaze to the side, informing the vile disciple Manchu Ziyu that it was all his fault. When Kai Meng Dai turned away and informed Manchu Ziyu that she would definitely kill him, Manchu Ziyu sharply slapped Kai Meng Dai on the soft spot and threw him on the bed with a sly smile on his face. The blushing Kai Meng Dai clenched her fist and looked at Manchu Ziyu with displeasure, who with a slight smile on his face reported that Master Kai Meng Dai was starting to annoy Manchu Ziyu again. Manchu Ziyu began to walk away, leaving a surprised Kai Meng Dai on the bed alone. Leaving, Manchu Ziyu with a calm expression on his face informed Kai Meng Dai that he had set up a deadly formation in the next hall, so Kai Meng Dai had better not go there without warning. After that, Manchu Ziyu reminded Master Kai Meng Dai that her disciple Manchu Ziyu still needed help with improving skills. Folding his hands behind his back, Manchu Ziyu noticed that if Kai Meng Dai died, the young man would be very upset. Kai Meng Dai blushed again from embarrassment and called Manchu Ziyu by name, shouting that one day Kai Meng Dai would tear Manchu Ziyu to pieces. After some time, Manchu Ziyu was sitting on a chair in the meditation hall and reading a bright glowing book. Manchu Ziyu studied information about such a subject as the ascending fruit Sheng Sheng. The system immediately displays a sign with information about this ascending fruit Sheng Sheng. The type of this item was a natural treasure. The class was divine, and also incredibly valuable. The functions of this ascending Sheng Sheng fruit were that it is a valuable treasure to create foundations. After consuming this fruit, you can build an ideal strong foundation for skills. It was also reported there that after consuming this fruit, mortals immediately jump over the boundaries of Bayan and increase the lifespan to 1,000 years. In addition to all this, the system also provided a description of this ascending Sheng Sheng fruit, which consisted in the fact that this fruit grows at the bottom of the demonic abyss of Tianku. Three fruits ripen once every 10,000 years. It was also reported that there was once a master of the divine lands who exchanged three top class techniques and two divine class techniques for this fruit in order to provide the best basics of skills for his beloved disciple. Reading all this, Manchu Ziyu smiled warmly, forming from his energy that bright golden book and the rising fruit Sheng Sheng itself. 
Manchu Zhu thought to himself that with this Tao Jing, which is revered as the best technique for forming the foundations of skills among the heavens and the earth, in combination with the stimulating fruit Shang Shang and the system, will improve Manchu Zhu's skills, continuing to smile. Manchu Zhu decided for himself that no one on the entire Tang Sen continent would have a better foundation of skills, except for Manchu Zhu himself. Then Mang Chu Ziu took a firmer grip on this very ascending Shang Shang fruit and took a bite. As soon as this piece of the rising Shang Shang fruit got into Man Chu Ziu's stomach, the young man closed his eyes and began to whisper the words that he was applying the Tao of Jing, asking him to rebuild his foundations. Man Chu Ziu felt how the bright energy of the fruit from the young man's stomach began to spread through his body in different directions, into the brain, into the hands and down the stomach. Man Chu Ziu immediately received several notifications from the system. The first tablet reported that the skills of the master man Chu Ziu had decreased to the eighth stage. The next tablet announced that the skills of the master man Chu Ziu had decreased to the sixth stage. The next notification was that master man Chu Ziu's skills had dropped to the third stage. After a certain period of time, man Chu Ziu received a system notification that now the owner of man Chu Ziu is immortal. Man Chu Ziu abruptly opened his red eyes immediately. A system plate called Choice appeared in front of Man Chu Ziu's eyes, which asked the owner of Man Chu Ziu whether to activate the breakthrough or not. Man Chu Ziu smiled slightly and replied with firm agreement. After a few moments, a notification appeared in front of Man Chu Ziu's eyes that the system had noticed that the host was using the strongest technique of creating the basics of Dao Jing, so the consumption of breakthrough points increased. Immediately after that, the system flashed a sign that it was about a hundred points per month. Then three more system plates appeared. Suddenly, Manchu Ziu opened his eyes, which turned into bright golden spotlights and broke into a smile. To himself, Manchu Ziu concluded that everyone thinks that nine is the maximum number, and stops. However, going beyond the norm, according to Manchu Ziu, is the path to perfection. Manchu Ziu also remembered that there is a huge risk of death during rebirth, but it is as huge as the rewards. Seven days later, Manchu Ziu began to form even more powerful and dense streams of bright golden energy than before. The system also notified Manchu Ziu that the real breakthrough was over, and the owner of Manchu Ziu successfully passed the 10 stages of foundation creation, spending 10 months and 1,000 breakthrough points. Then the system reported that now the owner of Manchu Ziu has zero points forming directly from the roof of the Kai Mengdai temple a huge black typhoon with bright golden lightning. Manchu Ziu shouted loudly and joyfully that he had done it. In the distance, a powerful and huge black typhoon with bright sparkling golden lightning could be seen. At the very top of Tang Sen Peak, a girl who was a master of Tang Sen Peak named Liu Ziu stood in a gazebo and watched this typhoon, drawing her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose. Liu Ziu privately concluded that there was such a strong flow of spiritual energy coming from there. The Tang Sen Peak master named Liu Ziu wondered if this pathetic Kai Meng Dai had made a breakthrough. At the same time, in a place filled with hot lava, Manchu Ziu continued to meditate, privately concluding that now Manchu Ziu's physical body and collected spiritual energy had reached their maximum. Then Manchu Ziu decided to himself that today he would be freed from all shackles by laying the strongest base for skills. Manchu Ziu meditated for a while longer, releasing streams of his bright energy. Then Manchu Ziu abruptly straightened up and clenched his fists, releasing bright fiery energy. A few moments later, Manchu Ziu received a system notification that the master of Manchu Ziu had made a breakthrough to the higher realm, from the base of the tenth layer to the sea realm chakra stage. Manchu Ziu chuckled contentedly, saying that the reward mechanism is so easy to start. Then Manchu Ziu turned to the system with a smile on his face and asked to show the demon lord Chu his reward as soon as possible. After that, Manchu Ziu jumped down, straight into the lava, passing through the streams of his bright energy. The system immediately sent a notification that the owner Manchu Ziu has reached the maximum, so the system activates the reward store. Manchu Ziu was very pleased with himself and even began to giggle. However, suddenly Manchu Ziu received a system alert, where the system congratulated the owner of Manchu Ziu on receiving an ancient primitive body. Manchu Ziu bulged his eyes in shock and cursed, wondering what kind of nonsense and what it was all about. Manchu Ziu asked again in surprise about this ancient primeval body. However, the system immediately highlighted a note that the ancient primordial body has unlimited resource consumption. After that, Manchu Ziu received another notification from the system, where it was reported that the master of Manchu Ziu was beginning to merge with the ancient primeval body. Manchu Ziu, horrified, began to wave his hands irritably and utter rude words, asking the system to stop the merger. However, after a few moments, the system flashed a sign with a notification that the merger was successful. Then Manchu Ziu heaved a sigh and turned blue with disappointment, turning to God. 
Manchu Ziu became frustrated and indignant about the fact that it was difficult for a young man to improve his skills by going through breakthroughs. Manchu Ziu was disappointed that now there is also this ancient primeval body. Manchu Ziu irritably called this system stupid and wondered aloud how he should play at all. Suddenly, the system highlighted another explanation that, summing up, at the present time, an ancient primitive body is equal to a useless body. After reading all these explanations from the system, the frustrated Manchu Ziu sat down and leaned his face on his arm, desperately looking into the void. The system immediately began to send one notification after another. The system turned to the owner of Manchu Ziu and told him not to doubt, but just do it. After that, the system clarified that Manchu Ziu had no resources. After that, the system suggested that Manchu Ziu then go through and steal these resources. The system noticed that if the master of Manchu Ziu could not overcome the strong, then the young man should attack the weak. The system encouraged Manchu Ziu to kill until no one dared to call themselves strong. In the last tablet, the system announced that as long as someone spends resources on billions of breakthroughs, the master of Manchu Ziu will be able to get greatness with the help of a primitive body. Manchu Ziu raised his eyebrows and cast a tired dissatisfied glance to the side, telling the system that it was still in the clouds. Then Manchu Ziu concluded that no one knows how many breakthrough points Manchu Ziu will need before the next breakthrough. The system in response highlighted the system profile of the host Manchu Ziu. It was written there that Mangchu Ziu belongs to the first layer C realm Chakra realm. Mangchu Ziu's special physique was that most ancient primeval body. The match had 317 divine class points. The development technique of Manchu Ziu was called the Father's Bible, the volume of foundation formation. Using the dust purification technique, Manchu Ziu sighed, privately concluding that since the young man merged with the ancient primeval body, Manchu Ziu can only continue to gnaw the granite of development. However, suddenly Manchu Ziu broke into a very sly smile, remembering that, fortunately, Manchu Ziu still has his precious master Kai Meng Dai. After some time, Manchu Ziu was walking down the street towards Kai Meng Dai Temple. At this time, in the front hall, Kai Meng Dai was happily eating the fruit that Manchu Ziu had recently brought. After taking a bite of one of the fruits, Kai Meng Dai heard a question about whether it was delicious to her. To which a satisfied and blushing Kai Meng Dai licked the fruit with her tongue, saying that it was even very tasty for her. Suddenly, Kai Meng Dai pulled her eyebrows to the bridge of her nose, and her eyes turned red with hostility. After looking closely at Manchu Ziu's smiling face, Kai Meng Dai sighed with displeasure, saying that it was him, a rebellious disciple. Manchu Ziu immediately walked up to Kai Meng Dai and put his arms around her shoulders with his hands. Manchu Ziu smiled contentedly and asked Master Kai Meng Dai if she was bored. Continuing to massage the shoulders of the embarrassed Kai Meng Dai, Manchu Ziu with a sweet smile on his face said that a couple of days had passed since their last meeting. But it seems to Manchu Ziu as if several winters had passed since their last meeting. After these words, Manchu Ziu kissed Kai Meng Dai on her shoulder and then sniffed at her skin, sensing something was wrong. Immediately after that, Manchu Ziu turned to Master Kai Meng Dai and asked about the last time Kai Meng Dai took a bath. Hearing this, Kai Meng Dai was greatly embarrassed and froze for a few seconds. Then Kai Meng Dai arched her eyebrows in annoyance and said with dissatisfaction in her voice that it was all because Manchu Ziu had forcibly occupied the back hall, and now Kai Meng Dai couldn't even wash. Manchu Ziu immediately tenderly took Kai Meng Dai's palm in his hands and politely informed the embarrassed master that it was all the fault of her disciple Manchu Ziu. Bowing, Manchu Ziu said that, since it happened, Manchu Ziu asks to let her disciple personally prepare a bath for Master Kai Meng Dai. Without waiting for an answer from Kai Meng Dai, who continued to nag Manchu Ziu with her incredulous and suspicious look, Manchu Ziu firmly grabbed the hand of his master Kai Meng Dai and led her to the bathroom with the words that Kai Meng Dai cannot worry since Manchu Ziu will not do anything to her. Kai Meng Dai, on the other hand, nervously shouted that her disciple Manchu Ziu was terrible. Then the already nervous Kai Meng Dai began to ask Manchu Ziu about what the young man was up to this time. After some time, Manchu Ziu brought Master Kai Meng Dai to the back hall, to the bathroom. After laying Master Kai Meng Dai on the floor, Manchu Ziu pressed the hands of a confused and very red Kai Meng Dai, simultaneously informing that the divine body definitely lives up to its name. Manchu Ziu noticed that even after several days without a bath, Kai Meng Dai's divine body remains unblemished, with a skin of white jade. The embarrassed Kai Meng Dai, listening to all this, crossed her knees from uncertainty and, stuttering, began to call Manchu Ziu an unruly disciple again. Manchu Ziu also affectionately kissed the back of Kai Meng Dai's palm and addressed her as a master, asking for her, since her disciple Manchu Ziu is really bad. Then the flirtatious Manchu Ziu began to ask Master Kai Meng Dai to let her disciple report to her personally. Ruddy with embarrassment, Kai Meng Dai exhaled heavily. 
wondering aloud what kind of obnoxious disciple man Chu Ziu was. Suddenly Kai Meng Dai's eyes bulged in shock and jerked violently, feeling that someone had come to the threshold of the hall. At this time, a Tiana Peak master named Kai Tang Zhang entered the outer courtyard. Approaching the gate of the temple, Kai Tang Zhang loudly called his younger sister Kai Meng Dai by name and asked her if Kai Meng Dai had already come out of her seclusion. Slightly tensed, Kai Tang Zhang turned back to his younger sister Kai Meng Dai and informed her that her older brother had especially made healing medicine from younger brother Tian from the peak of the alchemy cauldron. Kai Tang Zhang added that this medicine will help Kai Meng Dai to repair wounds. Then Kai Tang Zhang came closer to the gate and reported that he wanted to ask if Kai Meng Dai's sister knew that her disciple named Man Chu Zhu and Jan Meng from Tanjing Peak had decided to duel again. Kai Tang Zhang also reported that he had heard that Kai Meng Dai's sister's disciple, referring to Man Chu Zhu, is lazy and has low talent. So Kai Tang Zhang's older brother is worried that losing to Man Chu Zhu will affect the honor of Yun Zia Peak. Kai Meng Dai shouted to Kai Tang Zhang's older brother that she knew about this event. However, Kai Meng Dai also noticed that she could not interfere in the affairs of her disciple Man Chu Ziu, so let her participate. Suddenly Kai Tang Zhang turned to his younger sister Kai Meng Dai and hesitantly reported that she probably thinks Kai Tang Zhang is making too much noise. Then Kai Tang Zhang took out his flute and began to play on it. A few moments later, Kai Tang Zhang announced that this melody was called the Courtship of the Phoenix. Then Kai Tang Zhang reported that he got inspired when he was watching the moon a few nights ago. After these words, Kai Tang Zhang played his flute again, saying that this melody was for his sister Kai Meng Dai. By this time, Kai Meng Dai and Man Chu Ziu had just finished their most interesting and informative lesson. To the sounds of a wonderful flute melody played by Kai Tang Zhang, happy as a fox, Man Chu Ziu stroked the master of Kai Meng Dai, blushing from embarrassment and overexertion. Although Master Kai Meng Dai clearly enjoyed this informative lesson, the girl continued to say that Man Chu Ziu is just a terrible student. Then Kai Meng Dai shyly closed her eyes and bit her lips, thinking guiltily to herself that she was talking to her brother Kai Tang Zhang. Bye. Kai Meng Dai did not have time to think. As the cunning man Chu Ziu informed Kai Meng Dai that Master Kai Tang Zhang plays the flute excellently. Grinning, Kai Meng Dai noticed that he was already beginning to like Kai Meng Dai's brother, to which the embarrassed and guilty Kai Meng Dai told man Chu Ziu to close her mouth. Suddenly, man Chu Ziu broke into a creepy and very cunning smile and then turned to his master Kai Meng Dai and asked that, seeing her openness, wasn't it that Kai Meng Dai wouldn't mind if Man Chu Ziu took her resources for development? A system alert was displayed to the side of Man Chu Ziu, where the system reported that the owner of Man Chu Ziu was just a devil incarnate, because he took a lot, and now he takes even more. The system noticed how cruel it was, and then credited Man Chu Ziu with 500 breakthrough points as a reward. Kai Meng Dai, on the other hand, looked in surprise at the face of her disciple Man Chu Ziu and froze, her mouth slightly open. After some time in the courtyard, Kai Meng Dai, Man Chu Ziu and Kai Meng Dai herself were talking in a candlelit room. Kai Meng Dai placed several jars of vials in front of Man Chu Ziu, informing him that these were all medicines of the fourth layer and only a few of them from the fifth. Sitting in a meditation pose, Kai Meng Dai knitted her eyebrows in displeasure and informed Man Chu Ziu that there was nothing else. Kai Meng Dai explained this by saying that until Man Chu Ziu opens it, these are all the treasures that Kai Meng Dai can get from the storage ring. After collecting all the treasures in a bag, Man Chu Ziu turned on his heels and was about to leave with the words that it didn't matter, because at least there was a spiritual stone of the 4000th highest level, so it was better than nothing. Waving goodbye, Man Chu Zhu thanked Master Kai Meng Dai with a smile on his face. Clenching her fists, Kai Meng Dai lowered her head down in frustration, wondering to herself that maybe she should seek the help of a sacred master, and maybe she could remove this seal. Suddenly, Kai Meng Dai was covered with drops of cold sweat, realizing that if the sacred master could not do it, and her disciple felt it, he would run away. Then Kai Meng Dai slammed her fist on the floor. Wondering in horror to herself that she would really remain mortal and die of old age, Kai Meng Dai confidently decided that no, this was not her life. Kai Meng Dai then took out a fox mask from her clothes, privately concluding that it was a good thing that she hid this mask before Man Chu Ziu sealed her power. Kai Meng Dai also concluded that it was also a thank you that Man Chu Ziu did not search her body. Otherwise Man Chu Ziu would have taken this bronze fox mask. After looking at the mask, Kai Meng Dai said out loud that she might not be able to restore her skills, but with this mask, you can hide the presence of any cultivator. Kai Meng Dai decided that as long as she avoided direct contact with people, no one would think that her skills were sealed. Kai Meng Dai believed that at least she would not be attacked by enemies. Looking at the mask in her hands, Kai Meng Dai remembered that this mask was dropped by the demon Chu when Kai Meng Dai was chasing him. Kai Meng Dai sighed to herself, thinking about what a pity it was because the demon Chu could take over the whole world. 
Kai Meng Dai believed that if the Chu demon had developed correctly, it wouldn't have ended up like this. Deciding that, in any case, it's all in the past, Kai Meng Dai put on a fox mask, privately deciding that she needed to figure out how to get rid of the imprisonment of this rebellious student. Kai Meng Dai understood that otherwise she would be controlled by Manchu Ziyu for the rest of her life. At this time, in his room, Manchu Ziyu gasped in surprise for a second, and then broke into a smile thinking that his efforts were not in vain since Master Kai Meng Dai finally put on a bronze fox mask. Imagining Kai Meng Dai lying in a fox mask on his bed, Manchu Ziyu blushed with pleasure, thinking about what a beauty she was. Then Manchu Ziyu turned to his excellent master Kai Meng Dai and wondered how he could now develop peacefully in the sacred lands of Tai Su. Taking out the mystical blue blood sword, Manchu Ziyu concluded that although the reward system is not the best, but it's not so bad. Manchu Zi also realized that there were three days left before the duel with Jan Meng, and time was short. Manchu Zi decided that he needed to develop hard now. After that, Manchu Zi took a comfortable meditation pose and held two fingers in front of him, releasing streams of bright red energy for the development of the sword. Suddenly, the bright red energy took on a silhouette in the form of Manchu Zi himself, and he climbed with his feet on the sword, as if on a transport. The system, at this time, flashed a notification congratulating the owner of Manchu Ziyu that he comprehends states and is looking for a destination. The energetic bright red Manchu Ziyu, created by their spiritual energy, was only moving forward. The system informed Manchu Ziyu that he flew first 800 meters, then 1,000 meters, and then another 1,500 meters. After some more time, Manchu Ziyu departed from his body by 2,000 meters. And after some more time, the system flashed a notification that Manchu Ziyu had left for 9,999 meters. Once high in the sky, where there are many different colored rays, Manchu Ziyu bulged his eyes out of shock, and then smiled broadly, wondering if this was the purpose of the sword. After that, the energy Manchu Ziyu put two fingers in front of him and smiled broadly, intending to comprehend the purpose of the sword. Suddenly, from one such wide beam of red color, a thin ray came out, which went straight to Manchu Ziyu's head. Suddenly, Manchu Ziyu opened his pale white eyes. Manchu Ziyu now had a trident-like symbol on his forehead. The system immediately congratulated the owner of Manchu Ziyu on the successful search for a destination. The system also reported that one of the five main purposes of the sword, the divine punishment of the sword, had been received. The system also indicated the type in the form of the purpose of the sword with an elemental in the form of wind. Putting his hands on his hips, Manchu Ziyu smiled, saying that the purpose of divine punishment is not bad, since this purpose suits the style of Manchu Ziyu. Manchu Ziyu then shouted loudly to the sword to bring the young man back. Manchu Ziyu himself decided that she would return to her room and try to achieve a breakthrough in the purpose of her sword. Manchu Ziyu confidently shouted that if he achieved a breakthrough, he would end the duel with Kin Meng with just one blow. After a certain period of time in the sacred lands of Tai Su, at the peak of Tai Su, a young and beautiful girl who is a sacred master of the sacred land of Tai Su named Tai Su Zai felt something and concluded out loud that someone had just been looking for the purpose of the sword in the divine land. Tai Su Zai found it interesting seeing a bright red ray in the sky far away in the sky. Going to the energy red circle in the sky, sacred master Tai Su Zai bulged her eyes in surprise, noticing that that stranger had reached the mark of 9,999 meters. Sacred master Tai Su Zai wondered how such a thing was possible. Then the sacred master Tai Su Zai flew towards that bright red ray of destiny, silently remembering that in 30,000 years, only the god of the sword, the emperor of the fake kingdom from the realm of boundless blades could reach such heights. Tai Su Zai wondered if it could be that someone at the level of the sword god appeared in the sacred lands of Tai Su. Three days later, at Tang Sen Peak, a lot of people gathered in the duel arena to watch the fight between Manchu Ziyu and Kin Meng. Suddenly, the managing disciple of Tang Jan Peak, named Jian Ling Yun, yawned loudly and concluded that the street was busy today. Next to Jian Ling Yun stood a confident Kin Meng, who immediately addressed him as an elder and informed him that he had heard that Jian Ling Yun had recently made a breakthrough and moved into the realm of divine powers. Smiling broadly, Kin Meng said that this was really good news, to which Jian Ling Yun made a bored expression and said that it was just a realm of divine powers, nothing special. Seeing the managing disciple of Tan Giant Peak named Zhu Tan Giant, Jian Ling Yun smiled slightly and addressed her as Junior Zhu, saying that Jian Ling Yun would never have thought that he would see Zhu Tan Giant here. Jian Ling Yun also added that he thought Zhu Tan Giant wouldn't come to such a boring place. With her hands clasped behind her back, Zhu Tan Giant calmly reported that it was because of her, so Zhu Tan Giant would have come to see anyway. Zhu Tan Giant also said that she is familiar with Manchu Zhu. And Ziyu Tan Giant does not want to see Manchu Ziyu die today. After listening to Ziyu Tan Giant, Jian Ling Yun furrowed his eyebrows and pursed his lips, 
wondering to himself what Xiu Tan Giant found in this loser man Chu Xiu. Folding his hands in front of him, a confident Ken Meng immediately got into the conversation and turned to sister Ziu Tang Zhang, informing her that this girl could not save someone who was looking for death. Another young man laughed out loud and said that Man Chu Ziu was competing with brother Ken Meng with a strength level like a worm. That young man thought Man Chu Ziu was crazy. In the crowd, people joined in and began to furiously discuss the upcoming fight between Man Chu Ziu and Ken Meng. The bald young man asked about why Man Chu Ziu was not here yet and then said that he was probably scared. The second young man smiled and said that he didn't understand how Yun Zia Peak allowed trash like Man Chu Ziu to be a younger brother. Suddenly, the fifth sister of Yun Zia Peak, named Tao Yao, frowned and began to ask those young people that, had their master taught these young people to praise the strong and scold the weak, as well as enjoy ridiculing others. After seeing Tao Yao's fifth sister, people in the crowd were surprised to say that she had also come to watch the duel. Then the blushing young men stopped scolding Man Chu Ziu and switched to praising Tao Yao. Annoyed and dissatisfied, Tao Yao looked ahead. Suddenly, Man Chu Ziu arrived on his heavenly boat. The people in the crowd immediately shouted in surprise that Man Chu Ziu had arrived. Man Chu Ziu confidently folded his hands behind his back and looked ahead, landing on his heavenly boat. Seeing Man Chu Ziu, Tao Yao immediately called her older brother and ran to him. Man Chu Ziu waved to Tao Yao's younger sister and with a surprised intonation in his voice said that she had also come. Coming closer to Man Chu Ziu, a blushing and excited Tao Yao informed her brother that as long as she was here, no one would offend Man Chu Ziu. Man Chu Ziu smiled warmly and patted Tao Yao on the head, telling her not to worry, as Man Chu Ziu has everything under control. Tao Yao frowned and reported that she had been cultivating hard 20 days ago, and because of this, Man Chu Ziu's older brother suffered. Tao Yao said that now she feels guilty. To which Man Chu Ziu smiled sweetly and said that everything was fine, and it was not Tao Yao's fault. Then Man Chu Ziu cast a glance to the side and saw Ziu Tian Giant. Man Chu Ziu wondered to himself that this was the girl that Jan Meng was in love with. Scratching his chin, Man Chu Ziu concluded that Ziu Tian Giant had a good figure, but, alas, the skills were mediocre. Ziu Tian Giant, meanwhile, furrowed her brows, wondering why it seemed to her that Man Chu Ziu had become a completely different person. Ken Meng, on the other hand, turned to Jian Ling Yun's older brother and asked if he should still use the killing wind when Tao Yao is here. To which Jian Ling Yun said it was a duel, so why not? Jian Ling Yun then asked if Tao Yao was capable of shaking the heavens alone. Summing up, Jian Ling Yun grinned and told Ken Meng to kill Man Chu Ziu. Absolutely. To which Jian Meng promised his senior to deal with Man Chu Ziu. Then Ken Meng came forward and loudly addressed Man Chu Ziu, telling him that since he had come, it was time for them to enter the arena. Ken Meng shouted loudly, telling him not to waste his time, as Ken Meng had to return to training. Man Chu Ziu looked at Ken Meng with a smirk on his face and informed him that before they started, Man Chu Ziu wanted to say something. 